If you're anything like me, you know that tracking your workouts, your activities, your heart rate, and even your sleep is really important to your progress as an athlete. I recently consolidated everything that I was using to track my fitness to an Apple Watch. As a CrossFit athlete, I need my device to handle all kinds of conditions and situations, whether I'm swimming, I'm running, I'm pouring sweat, or I'm in a super chalky environment. And I also needed to be rugged because I'm pretty clumsy and I run into things a lot. I went with the Apple Watch Ultra. In this video, I'm going to show you how I let go of my Garmin Phoenix. 6 as well as my whoop 4.0 and why the apple watch ultra became my go-to device for all of this and just so you know you can get almost all these benefits with a standard cheap apple watch my nine-year-old son has an apple watch and he can do almost everything that i'm talking about with his little apple watch i'm going to talk about specifically why i like this one here we go so first of all i like how rugged and durable it is i am hard on the devices that i use especially the devices that are with me in the gym all the time i'm really hard on my phone i'm hard on my cameras because i'm going into environments that are super chalky, really dusty, not clean, there's sweat everywhere. And just to be clear, whether I'm working out in a 20 degree gym or like 110 degrees or 0% humidity or 100% humidity, I pour sweat all over the place. So I need this watch to hold up to all that I'm going to do to it. And I'm also fairly clumsy. I run into things all the time. So I need this glass to be pretty much bulletproof. I'm so clumsy that I don't even walk around inside of a house without shoes on because I'm afraid I'm going to break one of my toes because I have. I also like the battery life and standard Apple Watch that I have had in the past didn't have that great a battery life. The Ultra has great battery life. You can make this battery last for days and days and days. I use this watch to track all of my workouts, so it's running a lot through three to four hour training sessions with high usage, but that's not that big of a deal to me. On my desk here, I have my Apple Watch charger, and anytime I just look down and it's under 20%, I'll just plug it in because I'm probably going to be here for 45 minutes, and it's going to charge up, and it's going to be good to go for another day and a half. My Garmin Phoenix 6 which I'll talk about later, had much better battery life, but it lacked a lot of the features that make a really good watch nowadays for me. I also like that the Ultra is big. It's nice and big. I am 47 years old and I don't see very well. And that's not because of my old age. It's because I've got this thing with my eyes. It's degenerative, but I can see clearly the time or what round I'm on or how long I have left in a workout when I glance down at my Apple Watch. In fact, today I was doing toes to bar. I was actually glancing at my watch so that I could stop at the top of the minute. It's that clear for me to see. And there's little silly things that I've really liked. Like I can actually take a call on this watch. I can respond to texts. I can do quick triage things like get rid of emails and I can connect my AirPods and listen to music or podcasts or Spotify, whatever on my wrist. I'll talk again later about how the Garmin has that function, but it never worked. This is just really simple. And I have an iPad right here on my desk. I have a MacBook on my desk. I have an Apple watch. This whole ecosystem just works together nicely. And that's something that I really like. I like that the watch does everything that I would imagine I would want in a watch. It's those really simple things that just deliver deliver on the promise of I need this to function in a certain way and it just does without any question. I don't have to dig in to figure out how to do it. It just kind of intuitively works. So for training, one of the things I really like is all I have to do to start a new workout or track a new workout is just push the action button on the side. It will start tracking a workout for me immediately. I don't have to dig around and go into settings. It just starts. That same button will also function as a way for me to track the amount of rounds that I'm on or laps if I'm doing something at a track. Today, I did a workout that had seven rounds and it was some calories on the skier and some handstand walking with a 90 second rest in between. So three, two, one, go. Do the skier work, do the handstand walks, click the action button. Now that locks in the time it took me to get through that first round. And now it's counting upwards. And I can see when I get to the 90 second mark, press that lap button again to start tracking the next round of that workout. When it's done, I stop the workout. I haven't written down any of my scores on a whiteboard. All I have to do is open up my phone, look at the activity, and I can see how long each round took. And I can see the 90 second rest between each round. And I just copy and paste those numbers into SugarWad so I can log my score and I have it done. It's that simple. That's how it should work. Obviously, I can go in and review this particular workout where my heart rate was. I could see how my heart rate spiked and dropped and spiked and dropped in that interval style workout. It's just all built in right there and I can see it synced with the actual times that I was working out versus the times I was resting. I like to have all of that data and just understand what's going in my body after the fact when I can think back to what I was feeling in my body during the actual workout. I do a lot of zone two training to increase my overall capacity. That's 60 minutes spent in zone two and I normally do that on my bike erg, which is literally right behind me. And the thing I like about this watch is it knows the heart rate zones. And when I start that workout, I can scroll a couple of screens and I can see what heart rate zone I'm in during any particular workout. So in a zone two workout, I can see if I'm in zone one, I need to add a little bit of effort to get my heart rate into zone two. If I've gone too far, I'll see I've entered zone three. A really cool app would be something that would give me some sort of haptic feedback on my wrist. It would let me know if I got too low or I got up too high. I don't really want to be looking at my wrist, but with that screen enabled on my watch, I just glance down 
down and see where my heart rate is so that I can get a feel for where that's at in my body at the same time looking at my wrist. I'm teaching my brain what zone two feels like and then I'm hanging into that zone two for that entire 60 minutes. I travel to different CrossFit gyms all the time and often there's workouts where I have a 400 meter run or an 800 meter run built into that workout and I don't know specifically what an 800 meter run is at that particular gym. Everyone knows their 800 meter at their gym. Everyone knows their 400 meters or it's out to the electric box and back. That's the 200 meters. That's all great. I don't want to have to bother somebody every time I need to know how far 200 meters is from that door. So I could just start a run on my watch during my warm up and I can jog myself out to 200 meters, turn around and come back. Now I know what my route is going to be in this workout. I could do that with any distance, obviously. Or when I'm doing triathlon training or I'm in a triathlon, I switch it over to miles when I'm doing workouts that have that level of distance built into them. When I'm training for the CrossFit Games, I'm doing a lot of pool swimming, which the watch will help me track my laps because I can't remember what lap I'm on ever when I'm in the pool. I used to use poker chips to help count, but I have to stick my head out of the water and like move a poker chip to help me count those laps. Now I just let this do the work and I take a look at it in every 10 or so laps to just confirm. Am I on lap 10? Oh, wow, I'm on lap 12. That's great. So nice when this is counting for me, not my head, while I'm just enjoying the monotony of swimming. Or if I'm in an open water swim, I can see what my actual distance was in that open water swim. And then finally, and this is still in the category of training, I like to track my sleep with my Apple Watch. I have an app called Athletic and it tracks data a lot like a Whoop. But Athletic is a one-time $30 app that I'm going to have forever on my Apple Watch and it provides me with just the same data as the Whoop. I just don't have to pay a monthly subscription for it and I really, really enjoy that. So let's take a look at the Athletic app. So this is going to let me know overnight I had 25% recovery. Yesterday was a really big day. This morning I woke up in the red if we want to use the term from the Whoop. Exertion today, pretty light so far. Not a big crazy training day. I can see my heart rate where two primary workouts were for the day. There was some lifting built in there but there were two Metcons that I see in the green. Sleep last night. I got 89% of the required sleep, which again, this looks very similar to what we would see in a whoop. I can see the disturbances when I was awake, REM sleep, core sleep, and deep sleep. I would say that last night was not a great night's sleep for me. My energy expenditure for the day, I'm at 2200 calories burned for the day. Again, this is very similar to what we would see in a whoop. If I take a look at yesterday, I had a pretty hard day of training. There's some big Metcons in the mix, and I burned approximately 3800 calories yesterday. I decided after three years of using the whoop that it was just time to let it go. I had gotten into a rhythm of checking it every day. That's great. I love that data, but I was really tired of paying $30 a month for that data. That's a lot to pay for that data over three plus years. But I also really disliked a gadget on my wrist that didn't have a clock on it. When I started wearing the Roop, I looked at it so many times for the time. I just forgot that it wasn't a watch. Over time, it left a mark on my wrist, which I was generally concerned about. I didn't like that. But in order to have the time, I need to wear the Whoop on one wrist and a watch on another wrist. And for three years, I did that. It's fine. I managed it for three years, but it wasn't something that I really wanted as part of my life anymore. I was done with that. I also had a Garmin Phoenix 6 and I bought that watch a couple years ago when I was getting into triathlons during the off season and I'm doing a full Ironman triathlon this off season. So that's going to be pretty fun. And the Garmin Phoenix is just the brand that everyone says you want to get for a triathlon. And it did work at the time because it had the battery life that would survive an entire triathlon. So the Garmin worked for what I needed it to do for my first couple of half Ironman triathlons. As a watch, it did its job. As a tracking device, it was okay. As far as its interface and trying to find anything or make any changes to its interface, it was a nightmare. Like, I'm a pretty tech savvy guy. Like, I get this stuff. I like this stuff. I like to know how things work. It's embarrassing when I have to look up on Google, like, how do I change this on my Garmin watch? I also bought the model that would allow me to store music on it from Spotify so I could listen to music while I ran. I never got it to work. I couldn't figure it out. And that's really frustrating. I paid probably $100 more so I could have this Bluetooth connectivity and some storage on the watch so I could listen to music. I was really excited to do that. Never worked. And as opposed to the Apple Watch, which is totally integrated into my life with all my other Apple devices, the Garmin not integrated in any way whatsoever. But it did have an amazing battery. It would last a while on that battery life. On the other hand, I couldn't really see the screen. I'd be running in a triathlon and be like looking at the screen with my hand in front of my face so I could see what my time was. So not great. I need a bigger interface. This works great for me. Look at how big that is. Siri even thinks I'm talking to her right now. To wrap this up, I can't just leave this out there as the Apple Watch being the best device ever created. There's some hiccups to it. I inadvertently start a workout probably two or three times a day accidentally touching that button. I'll just look down and be like, oh, I'm doing a workout right now. Okay. So that's a little annoying. I can turn off the functionality of that button, but I like it. So I'm just going to leave it there. And every once in a while, I'm going to start a workout inadvertently and just stop that workout. The other thing that's tricky for a CrossFitter is if you want to put on grips or a wrist strap, you've got to somehow move this watch out of the way. And if you don't put something between the watch and that wrist strap or that grip, you're going to push a button on your Apple watch. This is my solution. I just wear a wristband. So my grip is up here and my Apple watch is there. And there's a gap between my grip and my Apple watch. And if I've got really 
really thick wristbands on, my Apple Watch is halfway up my arm. I feel all high tech like that, just pushing buttons on my arm. So that's my experience with the Apple Watch. I just like gadgets, so I thought I would share that with you. And stay tuned for a future video where I share why I bought a Tesla Model Y. It's the best car I've ever owned. I can't wait to share that one with you. And just remember, guys, your best days are ahead of you. Get bolder, not older.